Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course analysis of variance and design of experiments. So, if you re can recall, in the last lecture we had completed the intra block analysis of BIBD, and in this lecture we are going to consider the inter block analysis and the recovery of inter block information in the case of balanced incomplete block design. Now, at this stage we have understood all the concepts what are the different uh, symbols, notation, definitions in the case of BIBD. We already had learned that how are we going to conduct the analysis in case of uh, interblock analysis and we also have understood what are the different complications that we are going to face and how are we going to solve them. So now in this lecture we are simply going to implement those concepts, those expressions, those results in the case of BIBD and we will try to show you that how one can conduct the analysis of variant for the equality of treatment effects. So let us begin our lecture. So now if you try to see here that uh, when we talk about the interblock analysis or and the recovery of interblock information in BIBD. So, we know that when we are trying to conduct the intra block analysis of variance of an incomplete block design or say in this case a BIBD, the treatment effects uh, were estimated after eliminating the block effects from the normal equation, right that we have now understood. So, in a way the block effects were assumed to be not marked enough and so they were eliminated. We thought that okay, they are not really going to contribute something, but if you try to recall, I had taken an example when I explained you about the interblock analysis that how this block uh, total also contain the information about the treatment effects. So it is possible in many situations that the block effects are influential and marked. So in such conditions, the block totals may carry information about the treatment combinations also, right, that we already have done. So now our objective is that we want to use this information in estimating the treatment effects which may provide us more efficient results, right. So this can be achieved by the interblock analysis of incomplete block design which now we are going to implement under the balance incomplete block design. And this can be used further through the uh, recovery of interblock information, so right. So now first we try to aim to conduct the interblock analysis of BIBD. So as we have done in the case of intra-block analysis also the same approach we will follow here also that we are not going to derive the expression completely afresh, but we are going to use the basic assumption, symbols, notation, results from the interblock analysis of an incomplete block design. After that we will continue more because we had stopped after giving the basic idea, but now here we will try to complete the analysis. So now we are uh, uh, making all the assumptions including that the block effects are random and they have got the variance sigma beta square in the two way model. So model is also the same like as y i j is equal to uh, say mu plus beta i plus tau j plus epsilon i j from there you try to assume that this is here the random and then you try to obtain the model in terms of block total and then you try to obtain the principle of least squares and try to estimate the least square estimates of the treatment effect, the same approach that we had followed, right. So and after that uh, you had obtained and then you, if you try to recall you had combined the intra block and inter block estimate uh, using the weighted arithmetic mean, right. So that is the same thing now we are going to do in the case of BIBD. So now let us try to first try to find out all those expressions that we found mathematically earlier 
for the case of BIBD. So, what we have to do? We simply have to substitute the different values at the suitable places, right. So, now if you try to see here n transpose n that we already had found that it is going to be here like this where the diagonal elements are going to be sum of squares of this n i j's and then we have here cross product term and in the case of B i B d we know that this uh, that n transpose n is going to be the matrix like where the diagonal elements all are here r and off diagonal elements here are lambda right and we had expressed this thing in the form of uh, this matrix r minus lambda into identity matrix of order v plus lambda times e v 1 into e v 1 transpose that we already have done. So, there is no need to explain it again and after this if you try to find out the inverse of this matrix that can be obtained here as say 1 upon r minus lambda i v minus lambda into e v 1 into e v 1 transpose divided by r k means if you want to verify whether this inverse is correct or not I will say that you try to find out the product of n transpose n and its inverse and you can verify that this will come out to be an identity matrix. Well, so now based on that now first we try to find out the inter block estimates of tau right. So, they can be obtained directly just by using the expression of n transpose n whole inverse in the expression of inter block estimate that we found in the case of general incomplete block design. So, if you remember we had obtained the expression uh, for that estimate of tau under the case of inter block uh, analysis is was indicated by tau tilde. So, that was obtained here as say n transpose n whole inverse n transpose b minus g e e v 1 divided by b k. Right. So, now our uh, next objective is that we want to combine the two estimators of tau which are say tau hat based on intra block analysis and tau tilde based on this inter block analysis. So, that we can obtain an improved estimator of tau. So, that was that is what we are going to do with the concept of weighted arithmetic mean. If you remember we had done a small exercise and where we had obtained that uh, the arithmetic mean of the two estimators is going to give us a smaller variance uh, provided the two estimators are unbiased and uh, their weights are going to be found such that they are inversely proportional to the variance of the estimators. Right. So, um, now what we try to do here that in order to use this inter block and intra block estimates of tau together through the pool estimation that is the weighted arithmetic mean we consider the inter block and intra block estimate of the treatment contrast right. So, now how are we going to do it? Now, as you re remember when we consider the inter block analysis then instead of considering the estimation of uh, say tau we had considered the estimation of the linear parametric function of tau and you had seen that it had uh, some advantages when we are trying to do the statistical analysis. So, the same thing we try to do here that we try to consider the linear parametric function say of the form L transpose tau that is the same symbol that we use in the case of inter block analysis and we try to create here the two estimators of intra block and inter block estimates of tau for this linear parametric function. So, the intra block estimate of the linear parametric function L transpose tau based on tau hat is L transpose tau hat. Now, this is going to be here uh, L transpose generalized inverse of C into Q. Now, you have obtained this estimator in the case of B i B d here as a k upon uh, lambda v and this will become here L transpose Q. So, now if you try to see here what is this here L transpose Q that will simply become here summation over j l j q j where l 1, l 2 etcetera they are the scalars uh, which are present in the vector l. And uh, this now I try to express here as a summation j l j tau j hat right. Please note it here down here that I am trying to express now entire analysis in such a way such that towards the end it is uh, possible for us to understand the steps and the steps do not become too complicated. 
So, that is why I am trying to consider this L transpose tau hat to be presented in the form of summation L j tau j hat that can be obtained from direct here also, but now you are getting here the form of this uh, summation L j tau j hat also. Now, similarly you can do the same exercise for the inter block estimate of the treatment contrast L transpose tau right. And yeah, you have to keep in mind that uh, you are going to consider this linear parametric functions in the form of contrast. So, both this uh, estimators L transpose tau hat and L transpose tilde hat for the intra block and inter block estimates, they are for the L transpose tau which is a linear parametric function in the form of a contrast that you have to keep in mind. Yeah, Same thing what we have done earlier. So, now the inter block estimate of uh, this L transpose tau can be written in the format of uh, L transpose tau tilde as now you are trying to substitute here these values it will come out to be here L transpose and transpose B divided by R minus lambda. Right, And because you can see here because th this is a contrast so this term here uh, in this case here this will become 0 that we use in the earlier case also. So, now in case if you try to see here what is this here n transpose b this can be written here as same summation i goes from 1 to b and i j b i right. So, this term and if you try to see here what is this thing if you try to combine here these two terms here. So, this is n i j is going to take value here 0 or 1. So, this is going to be essentially the term which is here T j. If you try to recall we had introduced this new symbol in the last lecture. So, now this can be written here as say 1 upon r minus lambda summation over j uh, L j capital T j and this I am trying to express here as a summation j goes from 1 to v L j tau j kilda. Right. So, now you can see here we have considered here the linear parametric function in the form of a contrast and now we have here two estimators say here in the form of summation L j tau j hat and summation L j tau j tilde. Right. And uh, yeah, because So, now what we try to do here that we try to obtain the variance of uh, these two estimator of the linear parametric function in the form of contrast because we know that uh, at the end we are going to uh, find out the weighted arithmetic mean and where the weights are going to be inversely proportional to the variance of the estimator. So, that is why we try to find out here the variance of L transpose tau hat. So, this will come out to be here k upon lambda v square into variance of summation over j L j q j. And if you try to expand it, this will become here summation over j L j square variance of q j plus twice of uh, summation over j not equal to j prime L j L j prime covariance between q j and q j prime. Now, if you try to see, you already had obtained uh, the expression for the variance of q j and covariance be bet of uh, be between q j and q j prime in the case of BIBDs. So, they are obtained here as like this. And so, we try to substitute here this variance of q j here as say r into 1 minus 1 upon k sigma square and this covariance here as say minus lambda upon k sigma square. And we try to do it here, if we just try to uh, make it here more simple. So, I try to uh, replace here these values and then you can see here this is here summation l j square and then <coughs> this is here. Uh, uh, double summation j not equal to j prime. So, I try to replace this quantity by here summation j l j whole square this is the means first you try to do the summation and then take the square minus summation j l j square times sigma square and uh, I try to substitute here the value of covariance that is minus lambda upon k. Now, <coughs> you can see here this summation Lj because we are trying to consider here the contrast this becomes 0. right? So, this entire term becomes here 0 and this helps us in getting a simpler uh, expression for the variance of 
I will transpose tau hat as say here like this. This is the first term and this is here the second term. Now, you can see here that summation L j square is common in both the factors. So, I can take it out and so if I try to simplify it here, uh, this comes here like this right k upon uh, lambda v whole square 1 upon k lambda v minus 1 plus lambda summation l j square sigma square right. And if you try to simplify it here this will come out to be here k upon lambda v sigma square summation over j l j square. And uh, now similarly we can also find the variance of l transpose tau tilde which is based on the inter block analysis. So, this is obtained here as a like this variance of L transpose tilde this is 1 upon r minus lambda whole square and this will become here the same expression that summation over j L j square variance of T j plus twice of summation over j not equal to j prime L j L j prime covariance between T j and T j prime. And if you try to recall you can uh, find out uh, this variance of T j very easily because you are trying to say that every treatment is being replicated only r times. So, this is the summation over r terms and the variance here is sigma f square. If you have tried to recall when we conducted the inter block analysis of variance then we had converted the model y i j is equal to mu plus beta i plus tau j plus epsilon i j in terms of block totals and then we had defined the uh, random error there as a f and for which we had obtained the variance as sigma square f. So, this is the same variance. So, and then uh, this summation l j square and then lambda times sigma f e square and the same trick what we had obtained uh, uh, what we had utilized earlier that you try to write down the double summation l j l j prime as uh, like here this summation over j l j whole square minus summation over j l j square. So, this term because becomes 0 here because summation l j is equal to 0 because l transpose tau is a uh, contrast. And so, if you try to simplify it here this variance comes out to be here sigma f e square divided by r minus lambda into summation over j l j square right. So, now you can see here that now we have obtained the variance of L transpose tau tilde. Now, we need to combine it together, right. So, the information on this L transpose tau hat and L transpose tau tilde can be used together to obtain a more efficient estimator of L transpose tau, right. And uh, for that, we are going to consider the weighted arithmetic mean of both the estimators because that we have already done or we have that we already have learnt that how to combine them so that you can obtain a minimum variance and bias estimator right. So, the weighted arithmetic mean is going to be the minimum variance and bias estimator of L transpose tau when the weights of the corresponding estimates are chosen such that they are inversely proportional to the respective variance of the estimators. Do you remember that you had done uh, result like theta 1 upon theta 2 is equal to sigma 2 is square upon sigma 1 in the case of interblock analysis, right. So, now when we are trying to combine L transpose tau hat and uh, L transpose tilde, then the weights are going to be assigned which are inversely proportional to the variances as lambda v upon k sigma square and r minus lambda divided by sigma f a square right because now you already have obtained these variances. So, now you can combine them together. So, we try to write down the weights like uh, here like this. This is the weight assigned to the intra block estimate and this is the weight assigned to the inter block estimate and here is the sum of the two weights and then this is the intra block estimate of L transpose tau and this is here the inter block analysis is estimate of tau right. So, now what we have to do you see once now you, you have obtained this expression after that there is some algebra and uh, in case if I can explain you what is the objective what is 
the expression I want to achieve, then possibly understanding the algebra becomes very simple. That we were trying to consider the estimation of L transpose tau for which you have obtained the intra block estimate as say summation Lj tau j hat, the intra block estimate as say summation Lj tau j tilde. And similarly, you are now trying to consider this uh, weighted arithmetic mean. So, you also want to write it something like summation Lj tau j star, so that these two expressions they are also matching with the new expression. So, that is my simple objective and because of which I am trying to adjust my terms over here. Right. So, if you try to see here, I try to indicate here the inverse of variances as a w as omega 1 is equal to 1 upon sigma square and omega 2 is equal to 1 upon sigma f square. So, after that I can simplify this expression from here like this you can see here this is here omega 1 and here omega 2 right. Now, I try to simplify it here just try to do this simple algebra right. So, just uh, remove this this k here and try to bring k here. Now, after this if you try to see we are getting here a term like this one where we are trying to take uh, into consideration this term here say Lj and I am trying to take out here this Lj, this here, here and here outside the bracket sign. So, I can write down here summation over J Lj and then this expression which is lambda V omega 1 tau hat J plus K into R minus lambda into omega 2 tau J tilde divided by lambda v omega 1 plus k into r minus lambda omega 2 and this I try to express here as the say summation over j l j tau j star. So, this tau j star is this expression which is appearing here right. So, now you can see here we have uh, successfully converted this l star also to look like in the format of summation Lj tau j star right. So, uh, what we try to do here that we try to simplify the expression of this uh, tau j star right and uh, so that at the end uh, this is going to help us right. So, what we try to do here that yeah my simple objective is this I want to uh, do some simplification here. So, that at the end when we are trying to conduct the analysis of variance, when we want to obtain some of a squares, then this term is going to help us. So, for that you have to just observe this algebra that what I am going to do and once I am done, then you try to redo this algebra once again, because then you know what you really want to achieve. And surely when you are trying to do it for the first time, you cannot do it, but it, but you try to do it, you try to adjust some term and after that you get uh, to know that how are you going to adjust that term. So, because it tau j hat is given by this term, tau j tilde is given by th this term. So, the numerator of this tau j star which is given by here like this, this can be expressed here as say omega 1 k q j plus omega 2 k t q j. I am simply substituting the values of here tau j hat and tilde j hat. And similarly, the denominator of this uh, tau j star, which is here given by this expression omega 1 lambda v plus omega 2 k into r minus lambda, I simply try to use the properties of b i b d and I try to write down here lambda v here as a v r k minus 1 divided by v v minus 1 and here this r minus lambda here by this term here. right? And after that, you simply have to just simplify it by using the property that lambda times v minus 1 is equal to r into k minus 1. And if you just do a simple analysis, simple algebra, you will get here that term 1 upon v minus 1 into omega 1 v r k minus 1 plus omega 2 into k r v minus k. Right. Okay. So, now I try to define here one new variable, which is indicated here as a w j star. This is capital W j star. The idea here is simply that uh, this uh, symbol is going to help us at a later stage, nothing more than that. 
And this is not actually statistic. This is simply mathematics uh, and a very elementary algebra, but uh, with certain objective. So, we try to define this Wj star as a v minus k times Vj minus small v minus 1 capital Tj plus k minus 1 into g. And the, the advantage of defining this capital Wj star is this, the summation over j capital Wj star is equal to 0. Now, if you try to use this results in the tau j star, we get here like this. We have obtained the, this expression which we have just simplified. You can see here in the numerator here and in the denominator here. I am simply trying to substitute it here and then I try to uh, just uh, uh, substitute all these expressions and you can obtain here like this one, right. So, if you try to uh, and then you simply uh, have to have to just simplify it and you can see here where this q j I am trying to use here this relationship v j minus t j upon k which is uh, for the case of b i b d that, that we had found. So, you simply have to just uh, substitute here and then after this you simply try to simplify it here. So, we get here in this term and we have here a certain objective. We are trying to write down this uh, numerator in such a way so that one of the coefficient matches with the coefficient in the denominator. How is that I am going to do? This I will now try to show you. So, I simply try to write down here uh, this term here v j in terms of w j star. And uh, you can see here once you try to use here the definition of w j star, you can rewrite the entire expression in this particular way and after that you simply have to rearrange some of the terms. And the objective is that here that you want one of the coefficient to be the same as the coefficient in the denominator, right. So, what we are trying to do here that if we try to readjust this term and then you can see here I am simply trying to write down here like this that you can see here the means I am what I am trying to do that this coefficient and this coefficient they have to match. And I can write down here finally in the form of 1 upon r v j plus this coefficient here omega 1 minus k omega 2 divided by omega 1 into v into a minus 1 plus omega 2 into k into v minus k and then here I have here w j star minus k minus 1 times capital G. Yes, means I am acknowledging here that you need to do this adjustment uh, yourself with, with your own pen, own paper and own hand then you can obtain it very easily. It is not difficult, right? It is just simply some adjustment. And then I try to indicate this entire quantity here as a psi, which is here like this. So, now we have here this uh, term here as a 1 upon r v j plus psi times w j star minus k minus 1 times g, where your omega 1 is 1 upon sigma square and omega 2 is 1 upon sigma f a square. They are not uh, difficult to remember. Now, we after obtaining this expression of tau star, I try to obtain the pool estimate of the linear contrast uh, L transpose uh, tau using this tau star, which is becoming here say L transpose tau star, which is summation over j, L j tau j star and now you have obtained this term here, here tau j star. So, you try to substitute it here and you know that the summation L j will become here 0 because this is the contrast. Now, you have to find out here the variance of L transpose tau star also. So, what we try to do here that variance of L transpose tau is going to be here like this k upon lambda v omega 1 plus k into r minus lambda omega 2 summation over j L j square, right. And if you try to use the property that lambda uh, v minus 1 is equal to r 
a minus 1 then you can simplify here this expression and we can write down here like this k into v minus 1 divided by r into v times k minus 1 omega 1 plus k into v minus k omega 2 right and uh, this thing I can uh, write down here as a entire term here say sigma e square summation over j lj square divided by r right where your sigma e square is going to be the same quantity which you have just said right and this sigma e square is called as the effective variance right. So, you can see here now you have obtained the variance of L transpose tau star exactly in the same format as you had obtained earlier right right. So, now you can see here that you have expressed this uh, variance also in the format of the variance that you had obtained earlier for the intra block and intra block estimates in the format of linear parametric functions in the form of contrast. So, now you can see here that this type of format is going to help us uh, when we want to construct multiple comparison tests. For example, if you try to write down here the variance of tau j star minus tau j prime star which we are tau j and tau j prime they are the two different uh, uh, estimates. So, this will come out to be here 2 upon r sigma e square. Now, before we go further the first question comes here if you try to look into the structure of sigma e square that is containing the term sigma e square sigma beta e square. So, we need to estimate it. Now, you can see now the complications are going to start, but we have to be very careful, very watchful in knowing what are we going to do and how are we going to handle the issue. So, the effective variance can be approximately estimated by this quantity say MSE 1 plus V minus K W star or omega star right, where this omega star is given by omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by V into a minus 1 omega 1 plus k into v minus k omega 2 and MSE this is obtained from the intra block analysis that was SS error under treatment uh, uh, hypothesis divided by the degrees of freedom right. So, now so if you try to see here that even in this case you are trying to estimate the effective variance, but this omega star is difficult to obtain. Why? Because this is depending on omega 1, omega 2 you can see here and omega 1, omega 2 they are the 1 upon sigma square, 1 upon sigma f square. So, how do you obtain them? So, this quantity omega star depends upon the unknown sigma square and sigma beta square and if you want to solve it then one simple option is this you can estimate omega star. So, one simple option to know the value of omega star is that we can obtain the unbiased estimates of sigma square and sigma beta square and then we try to substitute them back in the place of sigma square and sigma beta square in omega star right. So, what are we going to do? We are simply going to replace this omega 1 and omega 2 by their respective estimates which are going to be obtained by replacing sigma square by sigma square hat and sigma beta square by sigma beta square hat where sigma square hat and sigma beta square hat they are the unbiased estimator of sigma square and sigma beta square respectively. So, an estimate of omega 1 can be obtained like this one say omega 1 hat is equal to 1 upon sigma square hat which is equal to 1 upon MSE, but you have to just uh, remember one thing once you are trying to make the inverse of sigma square hat then the properties of sigma square hat and 1 upon sigma square hat they are going to be different because now this is a new random variables right like for example, if x follows up some distribution f x 1 upon x will follow something else and that uh, distribution we always try to find uh, using some statistical technique right. 
So, now we, we try to consider here the estimation of omega 2 which depends on uh, say the values of uh, sigma square and sigma square beta which can be replaced by sigma square hat and sigma beta square hat. So, now the question is that uh, in order to obtain the estimate of uh, omega 2 we already have obtained the estimate of sigma square, but we need to obtain the sigma beta square estimator. So, for that we try to consider here the sum of square due to block that, that are adjusted as adjusted treatment sum of square plus unadjusted block sum of squares minus unadjusted treatment sum of squares that we had uh, discussed when we discussed the uh, this interblock analysis of variance. If you try to recall towards the end we had talked about it. So, now we are just going to find out these values particularly in this case of VIBD. So, now you can find out here the expected value of adjusted sum of is due to block as b k minus v sigma beta square plus b minus 1 times sigma square right. So, now what I am going to do what is your objective? Your objective is to find out an unbiased estimator of sigma beta square. So, what we try to do here that we try to replace sigma square by sigma square hat and try to bring it here on the left hand side and try to find out the value of sigma beta square so that we can construct the estimator right. So, if you try to do it here and n by estimator of sigma beta square is obtained as 1 upon b k minus v the adjusted sum of squares due to blocks minus b minus 1 into sigma square hat. And now this uh, sigma square hat can be replaced by this MSE. Right. So, if you try to simplify here and then this becomes here b minus 1 upon b k minus v into adjusted means uh, squares due to block minus mean squared error. And remember mean squared error is coming from intra block. Right. So, now uh, you can also use here the property of B i B d that B k is equal to V r and then you can simplify it here and this B minus 1 upon V into r minus 1 into M s block V which is based on the adjusted uh, sum of square due to block minus M s e this will come out to be here as an unbiased estimator of sigma beta square. So, now this is the statement for mean square block adjusted right. So, now you have obtained the sigma square hat and sigma beta square hat. Now, if you want to obtain an estimator of omega 2 as omega 2 hat, well if you try to see it is uh, difficult to find directly the estimator of omega 2 hat, but uh, this is uh, one possible way out. So, that we can obtain a feasible version of the estimator. So, we are simply trying to consider omega 2 is equal to 1 upon k sigma square plus sigma beta square which was actually here 1 upon sigma f a square if you try to recall. And we simply try to replace this sigma square by sigma square hat, sigma beta square by sigma beta square hat and we obtain here omega 2 hat. Surely, one thing you have to keep in mind that if you have to estimate omega 2 directly that you have to just consider the estimation of omega 2 without bothering where sigma square and sigma beta square are appearing, then that estimator may, may, may be something different, something else and its properties may be different from the way you have obtained here the omega 2 hat, but definitely now you can see that we are going into a complicated structure. And so, that is why we are aiming towards finding out a solution. So, if you now try to replace this sigma square hat and sigma beta square hat, you can obtain here this expression 1 upon v into r minus 1 k into b minus 1 adjusted sum of square due to block minus v minus k sum of square due to error uh, from the intra block analysis of the hypothesis related to the treatment effects. Right. So, now if you try to see, we have gone or we have come so far and sometimes it happens that many times students forget what they were trying to do. 
So if you try to recall, we were trying to develop a test of hypothesis for S0 tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau V and uh, we now want to develop it using the information based on the interblock analysis as well as intra-block analysis. Right, now you can see the things are becoming so complicated, sigma square hat, uh, sigma beta square hat, they have got a different types of properties and then you are trying to take its inverse, they will have different types of statistical properties. So finding out the distribution of the test statistics that used to happen in the case of uh, the two-way analysis of variance, now that does not remain here, it is going to be a little bit different. So we proceed as follows. Right, we try to obtain here the adjusted treatment totals based on the intra block and the inter block estimate as here like this Tj star, that is a new quantity which is equal to here Tj plus omega star into Wj star. Now you can see here that we will need here the Wj star, that is why I had introduced it there itself. And we try to treat this Tj star just like your usual treatment of total, usual treatment total as you were trying to do in the case of say complete block analysis. Now you see I am saying again and again that we are going to make some compromises means otherwise the problem has become too complicated to solve. So that is why you try to find out the values of Tj star so and just try to uh, consider them as the normal treatment total that you had found in the case of two-way analysis of variance in the complete block design or in the case of RBD, right. And then using this Tj star try to compute the treatment sum of squares like this one. And we try to indicate here it by say ST star square which is here summation J goes from 1 to V Tj star square minus summation j goes from 1 to v, tj star whole square divided by v, right. Now, in case if you try to see, when we are trying to consider the usual analysis of variance technique, the test statistic for such null hypothesis is developed by taking the ratio of the sum of squares due to the treatment divided by its degrees of freedom and the sum of squares due to error divided by its degrees of freedom. So now if you try to see what is really happening, we started with a very modest objective that we want to use the information on say intra-block analysis, inter-block analysis and we wanted to utilize the information on the block total to conduct the analysis of variance for the treatment effects. But now somehow the things are becoming very complicated. Now, as you had obtained the distributions of some soft square due to treatment blocks, etc., just by considering the quadratic form and which is going to follow a chi square distribution with some given degrees of freedom, which is equal to the rank of the matrix in the central part, those types of things are now becoming very difficult because you are trying to obtain the Tj star, which is depending on omega 1 and omega 2, omega 1 and omega 2 they are depending on the sigma square, sigma beta square that you do not know. So you are trying to estimate it and then you are not only using sigma square hat or sigma beta square hat, but you are trying to take their inverse, I mean the, the inverse of a random variable is going to have a different properties than the random variable itself. And then finding out the distribution of 1 upon sigma square hat and 1 upon sigma beta square it is also difficult. So that is why now we are in a situation where the problems are becoming too complicated but we want to move ahead, we want to get here a solution. So we try to see that uh, we try to approximate the solution and we try to think as if suppose for a while we are working in the setup of two-way analysis of variance under the complete block designs and now we have obtained the sum of square due to treatment using this Tj star. We have obtained here the sum of squares due to error from the intra-block analysis of variance. Now if you try to 
treat them as if they are obtained from the usual two-way analysis or variant from the complete block design analysis, what we can do? We can simply take the sum of square due to treatment divided by its degrees of freedom upon the sum of square due to error divided by its degrees of freedom. Although, what will be the exact distribution of this statistic? That is very difficult to find. But just for the sake of simplicity, from our experience, we had known that, okay, if we are trying to take this type of expression, means every time it was following a F distribution. So, here also we assume that, uh, we assume that this is going to follow a F distribution. Well, there can be some deviation, means if somebody can find out the exact distribution and, uh, and in case if this it, uh, is compared with the F distribution, there may be much, uh, there, be, there may be some differences, but the type of situation in which we are working and if we are trying to follow or at least trying to find out a solution, up to now we have seen that we have followed all the rules of statistics, so we believe that there may not be much difference and based on this idea, we move forward, right. So, we come to our lecture. So, now following the same idea here, we define the statistics here like as st star square divided by the degrees of freedom v minus 1 into r divided by msc into 1 plus v minus k into w star hat, right. Where this uh, w star hat is an estimator of w star and now you can see here this statistic we are going to indicate by here say f star. So, f star depends on omega star hat, the values of omega star hat itself depends upon the estimated variance sigma square hat, sigma hat square f. So, it cannot be ascertained that uh, this f star is uh, necessarily going to follow a f distribution. But since the construction of uh, this f star is based on the earlier approaches where the statistics was found to follow the exact f distribution. So, based on this idea, the distribution of f star can be considered to be approximately f distributed, right. So, this is what you have to keep in mind whenever you are trying to conduct this analysis that we are going to make here some compromises and you should know where the compromises are going to be made, right. So, the approximate distribution of f star is considered here as f distribution with v minus 1 and b k minus b minus v plus 1 degrees of freedom and uh, always remember that omega star hat is an estimator of omega star star which is obtained by substituting the unbiased estimators of omega 1 and omega 2 in the sense that you are trying to estimate sigma square, sigma beta square unbiasedly and then you are trying to replace them. So, now the question here is this, what happens to our estimate of this linear parametric function which is based on the pool estimator. So, the now we try to say that uh, it is now becoming very difficult. So, we try to find out an approximate estimator of L transpose tau. So, an approximate best pool estimator of summation L j tau j is given by here like this summation L j into V j plus psi hat capital W j divided by here R, right. And its variance is approximately estimated by this quantity k summation j l j square divided by lambda v omega 1 hat plus r minus lambda into k into omega 2 hat, right. So, now you can see here that in case of uh, the your BIHBD is resolvable, then in that case this uh, sigma square beta can be obtained by using the adjusted block with the replication sums of square from the intra block analysis of variance. And suppose if the sum of square due to such block total is indicated by S star block, then the corresponding mean square here is simply the sum of square due to block divided by the degrees of freedom V minus R 
and if you try to find out the expectation of this quantity, this mean square, this comes out to be a sigma square plus v minus k into r minus 1 divided by b minus r sigma beta square. And if you try to simplify it, this will come out to be a sigma square plus r minus 1 times k upon r sigma beta square. Right. And then we have here k into b minus r is equal to r into k minus k and thus we can obtain the expected value of r into mean square star due to block minus MSC as r minus 1 into sigma square plus k sigma beta square and then we can obtain the estimators of omega 1 and omega 2 like this. The estimator of omega 1 remain the same as earlier 1 upon MSC where this MSE is obtained from the intra block analysis and then omega 2 hat becomes here r into mean square star due to blocks minus MSE divided by r minus 1 and its whole inverse. Now, once you have obtained this thing, then you can conduct the, the analysis of variance and suitably you can uh, create the ANOVA table also because now we are already covered so much. So, I do not want to make you here more confused. So, now I believe that after that you can handle the situation. Right. So, now if you want to know the increase in the precision using inter block analysis as compared to the intra block analysis. For, for example, somebody would like to know that why should I do all this analysis because once we have done the similar result based on the intra block, why should I go for inter block analysis and try to see, uh, try to face all these complications. So, the increase in uh, the other gain in precision can be obtained using the expression variance of tau hat divided by variance of tau star minus 1. This term will come out to be here like this. Right. So, if you try to simplify it, this will be here omega 2 into r minus lambda times k divided by lambda v omega 1. So, now, but again this uh, term depends on omega 1 and omega 2, which is ultimately dependent on sigma square and sigma beta square. So, you want to estimate it. So, we try to follow the same approach that we try to obtain the estimators of sigma square and sigma beta square and then we try to replace them here and we try to obtain here omega 1 hat and omega 2 hat. Right. So, although you can see here, although in the case of uh, omega 1 and omega 2, omega 1 is greater than omega 2, but this may not hold true uh, for omega 1 hat uh, and omega 2 hat that uh, this omega 1 hat is greater than omega 2 hat that cannot be guaranteed. Right. And then the and in some situation, it is possible that the estimates say omega 1 hat and omega 2 hat may also be negative, but in that case, uh, you simply try to take uh, both of them to be the same. That is one possible solution which has been suggested in the literature. Right. So, now we come to an end to this uh, lecture and you can see here, now we have completed the intra and uh, inter block uh, analysis in the case of incomplete block design. I understand this was a long journey and uh, several complicated topics have been uh, introduced, but if you have some patience to understand and if you try to revise this lecture, try to settle down these concepts in your mind, it is not difficult. Now, I can say very simply, you have the hypothesis H not tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau v. You estimate it tau from intra block, from inter block, then you combine it together and based on that you conducted the analysis of variance and you face some complications. So, you try to solve them as simple as that. So, I would request you all that you try to now revise this inter block analysis right from the beginning and try to club them together, the simple concept and try to see how they are uh, trying to create a story. The story means analysis of variance. And then at the end, I am sure that you can understand all these uh, hiccups that we had found and, and you will understand how we have solved them. So, you try to practice it and I will see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.